What's up developers and problem solvers? Rod Chicken in one to bring you guys another video today. And the title of our video is gonna talk about the bitter truth of back-end web development. A lot of you guys wanna get into back-end web development. You hear a lot of professors, a lot of YouTube, um, and a lot of people online talking about getting into web development, especially the back-end is gonna really put you in a position to make that first six figures. Yeah, they are right, but there's a lot of things they're not telling you guys, and I wanna share with you guys here so that you don't reach, you don't put yourself in a position so that you can fail. So let's go into the, um, let me give you guys a good story right here, guys. Um, first of all, nobody really cares about back-end web development from a outside of our development community, guys. The employers, the clients, all they are worried about is the end result. The good thing about front-end development, you can actually see the design, you can actually see the back-end, all that good stuff like that. Database developers, you get to see the database and it's stored, they have to do reports, they can go in and do basic select statements, so that they, they kinda know about that. The back end get kinda lost, guys, unfortunately. And nobody really give it any thought outside of the IT department, and I wanted to let you guys know, it's okay, it's okay. We have to make sure we are, um, aware of that and to know how to talk to the client or the employer when we are presenting new back-end web development work because if we, if we don't do this correctly guys it really puts you in a position where they're confused they might not say they need it or they try to lowball you on something because they say i don't need that i don't care about um, java or uh, c sharp or uh, Python or whatever programming languages you're talking about using. They don't want to hear about that, guys. Kind of like, um, give you guys a story. And everybody should know about this story. When the iPhone came out, man, it was revolutionary. Everybody saw this phone, it was new, it was great, and everybody was on board with it. And, um, you know, for the first couple of years, it came out with new features, and it was great, and everybody went out and went and bought the new phone, and every year they went out and got a new phone because it's a revolutionary thing. Well, over the years, those functionality, the, the year one didn't look as uh, different than year two and the functionality in the inside of it it was a superior phone but from the basic um, user they didn't necessarily know so they just kind of stick with the old one even though the new one can benefit them significantly back-end developers have the exact same problem guys because when we actually go to the client and actually present this to them they see man my program is still running good the GUIs look the same the data look the same what are you doing and we have to really kind of educate them on well we can actually make it more efficient more faster for security reason from a robust from a scale all of those words need to be said and really put you guys in a position to get that type of money that you guys want and be able to sell your products and services if you're a freelance web developer. So guys, it's so important, just like those smartphones, you know, over time, software is maturing to the point where it really don't necessarily uh, need to be updated or they don't see a need for significant changes in the code. So you really got to be able to convince the client or the customer to really kind of invest in your product. So. Um, so that's, that's the first option, guys. That's the, that's the number one problem. That's one of the biggest problems back-end web developers have. Um, another one, guys, the game is changing. Software is evolving and maturing. It's not like it used to be, guys, where you can come in and build um, key functionality that's gonna really change the game. It's mature, they got at least 80, 90% of the functionality. All the other new projects gonna be more incremental. Incremental. You're gonna have to know about the, uh, the business, know what their pain points are, know what existing technology stacks they use to really provide that additional value, guys. Don't come in thinking that you can use your old um, methodologies say hey I, I'm a PHP developer I'm going to any shop and I can get, build this WordPress website for everybody well most people already have a website most people have a platform that they're happy with that semi integrates with their existing web stack just because you come in there with a hammer don't mean you can hammer a screw in the wall sometimes you need a screwdriver 
And even though you're not that good at the screwdriver, it works instead of the hammer. You're not a hammer uh, contractor. You're not a screwdriver contractor. You are a contractor that solves problems when you come in and build houses. The same with programming, guys. You're just not a PHP programmer sometimes. You have to learn C Sharp or any other programming language depending on the stack. You don't have to be an expert. You just need to know enough to be able to go in, identify the problem, if you have to go out and work with an outside contractor or outside developer who knows that framework or that program language specifically, do that. Or don't take the job if you're coming in there to change what they're doing. Guys, the point I'm trying to make is really understand what type of work you're good at and identify the problems. If you can't solve it, find somebody that who can and maybe you can subcontract, maybe you can solve the problem for the client, maybe you can work out a deal with that other developers say hey could we do an 80 20 split or 80 10 split or whatever that split may be so that you can still provide value even though you don't know that program languages but the point is you solve the client's problem guys so it's not that you can't solve every problem it's just that you got to know what your niche is what type of developer you're going to be I started off on the SQL side, so that's my strength. Once you start to get in that front end too deep, I go out, get help from other people. I don't come in and just changing something to a programming language I know. I just stick with what works for the client and solve that problem. So um, that being said, guys, number two, don't reinvent the wheel back-end web developers are horrible at this because they feel like they want to program everything. They want to showcase their programming skills. Sometimes you can go on Stack Overflow and find exactly the code you need without you having to redevelop it. That code on Stack Overflow been tested and tried and true, but yet you want to insert your code that's flaky at best. <laughs> You don't want to do this, guys. Don't reinvent the wheel. I'm not going to stay on this one too long. Regardless of what program language you use, don't reinvent the wheel, especially black back-end developers. Don't do that because it really puts you in a position to have a program that could possibly fail and not test it, guys. Last but not least, keep it simple, guys. When you talk about um, back-end web development, you can really overcomplicate things because you're passing data from the front end, um, from the uh, this, uh, GUI interface to the database and vice versa. And it can be very complicated. Guys, always keep it simple. You don't have to necessarily build functionality in, in anticipation of something that not happened yet. It's okay to go in and do it later on. Make the program simple, functional, robust, and that's all you need for that project. That's why you got phase two, phase three, phase four projects to really put yourself in a position to win. So kind of keep that in mind, guys. It's very important that you do that. And last but not least, guys, you are a problem solver. You are not a back-end web developer only. Think of yourself as a problem solver. That's going to take you so far in your career. And you guys probably tired of me he um, talking about this in every video. But I'm going to keep harping on it until you guys show me the projects that's going to really get you the job. Unfortunately, a lot of you guys wondering why you can't get a job as a uh, back-end web developer. And uh, most of it is the way you present yourself in an interview. You come in showing all this code, showing all these projects and not necessarily showing what problems you solved in the past. And companies or hiring managers is really not resonating with that. You guys got to take get your game up, really put yourself in a position to win on that. So um, if you haven't already, guys, I have a seven step guide below that's really going to help you take your back end web development skills to the next level and really put you in a position to get that first job or that next job. And you're going to get paid that six figure income or salary that you want. But you have to put yourself in a position to win, have to nail that interview. And I can get you guys started with my seven step career guide in the description box. So go ahead, sign up for that. And and um, if you just want to be a part of the community, you also can sign up for that too. Links below for both. And um, I want to make sure both all you guys kind of get started with that. If you haven't already, 
You see that little red button, that little red subscribe button down there? Let's click that button, guys. Let's get my subscribers up. I'm really going to start putting effort, more effort into this channel so that we can build a community that's going to help. Right, guys, be, uh, bear with me. I'm still working out some of the back-end logistics, trying to get some help on a lot of this stuff. And um, we're going to build this thing up. So the faster you become a part of the community and you give feedback, the better it's going to be long-term for everybody. So like, subscribe to the content. If you have additional questions, Comment below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.